Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to MST.TV. This is Nishi here bringing you all another Market Watch episode. Now, believe it or not, we didn't have too many ridiculous buyouts over the last couple of days. Now, a lot of the cards that we're going to cover in today's episode, I think are actually pretty similar to what we would see in the normal course of regular Yu-Gi-Oh! Some related to news, some related to meta developments that have kind of shaped up. Now, that's not to say there were no bad buyouts because well, that's kind of what the Yu-Gi-Oh! community apparently does best, and there's a very strong chance that we're going to see a whole ton of awful buyouts the rest of this week and over the weekend to kind of compensate for that. But that's okay, we'll cover those next week. For now, let's jump into today's Market Watch. Alright, so first up we have Mechlord Emperor Skill, which had its secret rare version bought out a day or two ago when we had the new Mechlord support announced. Now that support is going to be coming in the next Legendary Duelist set, I believe, or their equivalent in the OCG. Now from what I understand, the cards are pretty decent that they got. I think they get like a new Rota, and they get a Rescue Rabbit, and some other cards. However, I do believe that skill isn't actually very useful in the Mechlord deck. It has an extremely situational effect. And while it's probably cute if you can resolve it, I don't think that anyone is really resolving this card consistently. So rather than being bought out because people think it's going to be good in the deck, I think people chose it because it's the only card from the archetype that was a secret rare in a main set. And therefore it's like a little bit harder to find than a lot of the other cards, there's probably fewer quantities. It was easier to buy out and cause to spike in price, giving them a better opportunity to dump the card right after. This is the type of buyout that we would see even without everything going on right now, because it's the result of new support for this archetype. I am however going to recommend dropping this card as soon as possible, because honestly it's not really going to be useful even if you do want to play the Mechlord deck. Next up, we have the Sanctum of Parshath, which is a little bit confusing to me. Uh, this card was out of the Counter Fairy Structure deck that we saw like a year or two ago. Now that deck was honestly not that great. It had a couple of useful cards, maybe like Ties of the Brethren and Arc Lord Christia and Ava, but nothing really meta relevant and it didn't have a ton of like useful staples or anything like we've seen from the last couple of Structure decks. However, this random card has actually jumped up to the $5 to $7 price point, which is weird because I think that stores were actually trying to move the whole structured X for like 5 bucks each not that long ago. Now, I don't actually know why this card was bought out randomly for sure, I haven't seen it in any top deck lists or anything like that. Theoretically, I guess it could be useful in like a back row heavy deck as a way to play around Lightning Storm, right? If you have like 4 back row up and then this card, your opponent would have to get rid of this Sanctum in order to successfully Lightning Storm you, or they're going to waste the Lightning Storm on the Sanctum, and if they have another one then sure, or they have to like Cosmic Cycle on this before they Lightning Storm. I don't know, it could force some like interesting plays from your opponent, but probably nothing too crazy. Uh, also it does have that ability to recycle counter traps in the late game, though with cards like Solemn Judgment and Solemn Strike, do you really have enough life points to resolve this effect? Now this is all speculation obviously, right? Like I don't actually know 100% why people are talking about this card, if at all. I think it actually might just be someone trying to hype the card up out of nowhere. So it's another card that I am going to recommend getting rid of while there's some of this hype around it randomly. All right, so we did see a little bit of hype surrounding a couple of different generators cards. Uh, we have new support coming for the archetype in Eternity Code, which is really really cool stuff. They have a new boss monster, they have a way to summon a generator out of the deck during your opponent's turn, which is really awesome. However, because of this we've actually seen Mardell and Boss Stage start to spike up a bit in price. Uh, both of these cards were short printed when they were first released in Mystic Fighters, and they haven't seen a reprint since. Now, Boss Stage actually jumped from being down at around $8 to $13 now, and Mardell was actually the really crazy one. It was only $16 to $17, maybe $20 before. It's all the way up at $39 to $40, which is pretty insane. Uh, this is kind of natural too, right? As people are hyped up for the deck, which actually looks like it has a lot of potential to be like a really solid rogue deck or a tier 2 option. I don't actually think that the cards are going to be reprinted this year, right? They just came out at the end of 2019. We're probably not seeing reprints of Mardell and Boss Stage until at least like the middle of 2021. Hopefully you have your copies of these cards if you're looking to play Generators. If not, you can wait for a month or two for the prices to kind of cool back down naturally as people maybe realize that Generators aren't like a tier 1 or tier 0.5 deck this format and they kind of sell it off because they don't want to play it anymore. 
Other than that, you're probably going to be waiting for about a year to see these cards reprinted. All right, so this one might seem a little bit random. Uh, I actually saw a couple of people posting about this on Facebook, kind of like confused, but I actually believe that this one is a little bit overdue. Uh, we have Karakuri Merchant MDL 177 Inoshichi, which is a rare from Star Strike Blast that is basically like a Stratos for the Karakuri archetype. It does also have the added benefit of being immune to prohibition since no one can remember this card's entire name. Obviously I'm kidding, but yeah, like Karakuris are actually a really strong combo deck and can do some crazy things, especially with a card like Urgent Schedule if they open with it. Uh, my friend Ryan actually loves the deck and he showed me some of the boards that he was making. They're insane, like ending on like VFD, Naturia Beast, all of these different things. Now the deck does have a little bit of a harder time playing around something like Nibiru or another interruption if those interruptions are played at the right time, which might make it a little bit difficult for the deck to see like competitive success. It's maybe not as resilient as a combo deck like Ad Emancipators. Uh, nevertheless, I think that the deck does have a lot of potential. If we start to maybe see Nibiru phase out of the meta, something like that, I could definitely see Karakuri coming in and taking like some regionals or the occasional YCS top maybe. Uh, this card is a rare from the notorious set Star Strike Blast, so of course it hasn't yet been reprinted, and of course it's already a $7 rare, which is a lot. I guess it's not as bad as some of the other cards we've seen from Star Strike Blast, like Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, hopefully it will be reprinted as an OTS common or a super relatively soon if the deck starts to pick up some attention, but until then, I do believe that this card is actually going to be fairly difficult to find and therefore quite expensive. Next up, we have something that I believe was actually talked about over on Simo's channel first, uh, but I found out about it from a couple of different posts on social media. Apparently, people have discovered a really interesting application for Gizmec Uka, which is the new Gizmec card coming out in Eternity Code as a secret rare. If your opponent summons a monster from the main deck, you get to special summon this card out of your hand, and then summon a monster from your deck that has equal attack and defense points, and has an attribute that matches that of a monster your opponent controls. Now, this is because of Crystron Needle Fiber, which summons a tuner out of the deck, and lets you get Uka onto the board from your hand for free. You can then use its effect to summon Barrier Statue of the Torrent, which prevents both players from special summoning monsters, except for water monsters, and it's a water monster, just like Needle Fiber. So most of the time, this is going to effectively end your opponent's turn, especially if it's their first turn and they don't even get a battle phase. Now, Gizmec Uka was one of the cheapest secret rares in Eternity Code originally from what we saw at like the pre-orders on TCG Player and whatnot, down at around the $10 to $12 mark. However, with this potential meta application, it has jumped all the way up to being $40 a piece on TCG Player. Obviously, we have to take this with a bit of a grain of salt because there's such limited quantities available on the market with the set not even being officially released in a lot of areas. I think it's very likely that we're going to see the card gradually trend back down towards the $15 to $20 mark. Now, it is also worth noting that Barrier Statue of the Torrent, which is the floodgate summoned out by this combo, only has two printings, right? One from Cyberdark Impact and one from a relatively recent OTS tournament pack, and it is now a $4 to $5 card. I think that if you have the time, it's probably worth digging out and setting aside, maybe having one or two copies for yourself, and then moving all of the rest. I don't know how much meta play this combo is actually going to see, it is still extremely early and I haven't actually seen it from any top decks from online tournaments, so that's still kind of up in the air. It is also maybe potentially worth holding onto the other barrier statues of different attributes though, as they can also be special summoned by Gizmec Uka, depending on the format or the matchup, and several of them do only have one printing available as well. So this is a card that I'm personally really fond of, and it is Salvage. It has a really simple effect where you get to add two water monsters with 1500 attack points or less from your graveyard to your hand. Super simple, but really effective in the right deck and the right situation. Now, it just so happens that we have two borderline meta decks that can potentially make use of this card in Mermails and Plunder Patrol. Now, in Mermails, you can add back like a Deep Sea Diva or an Abyss Gun to combo off in following turns. And in Plunder Patrols, you can add back your Whitebeard or your Redbeard and then discard them again for more free summons. I think this is really interesting and I think it's really solid, especially in Plunder Patrols. Now, this card does only have one holo printing which is from Legendary Collection Yugi's World, where a lot of different cards have kind of jumped up in price unexpectedly, and this card is a solid $9 to $10 a piece. There are a few other common copies which are fairly easy to find, and the Duelist League rares are really cool but they're hard to find, uh, but if you're looking for a holo, you are looking at paying the $9 to $10 each 
for this card at the moment. Now, if Plunder Patrols or Mermails start doing really, really well, this card might potentially increase, but most likely, given how the meta looks at the moment, its price is going to stay fairly steady at around the $10 mark. So one thing I want to take quick note of here is the Dark Magicians, which is the fusion monster from Legendary Duelist Magical Hero. So this card was actually relatively cheap for a short printed card, right down at around the $20 mark for quite a while. However, it is starting to trend up and it's now at the 38, almost $40 mark, which is basically like double what it was before, right? So on one hand, this card is very collectible. It's a Dark Magician card, so it's one of the more iconic and recognizable monsters in the game. It also probably isn't going to be reprinted for a couple of years at least. So that's lots of time to sell to people who are impatient and they want the card as soon as possible. However, I'm also kind of sort of wondering if there's a slight possibility that the card will try to see some meta play after Red Eyes Dragoon is released to the TCG because technically, right, you could use Magicalized Fusion to make this card by using a Dark Magician that you dump off of Red Eyes Fusion and then like the Apprentice Illusion Magician that you dump with Magician Souls in order to get this card out. I know it seems like really, really bad, but I'm just thinking about what might be funny to run in a tournament and like catch someone completely off guard with. Oh, well, just do note that this card is now fairly expensive and it is probably going to continue trending upwards in price for the next year or two as a very highly collectible piece. All right, so this one's pretty funny. I guess I'll talk about it quickly. A couple of days ago, right, I saw posts on Facebook about how Ultimate Rare Dandelion was a $35 card, even though it was banned. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of stupid. Well, apparently you guys outdid yourselves with this one because someone decided to buy out Whatever copies were left, and Dandelion is now only available on TCG Player for a crisp $100 bill if it's Ultimate Rare, uh, which is, I think, too much to pay for this card. Actually, even the Ultras have jumped, and for a Near Mint one, you're looking at like $20 each. I think that this is kind of like Delinquent Duo, right? People are buying out like that higher max rarity stuff for older format decks, because Plant Synchro was definitely a really interesting format to play in, and people want to bling it out. If you are thinking that Dandelion will come back, I don't think that's happening anytime soon, so really good luck with that one. <laughs> Alright guys, so last card here, and you guys must have known that I wouldn't finish off the Market Watch without going over at least one extremely like ridiculous price jump. Well, let's talk about Medulce Angeli, which is now a $50 card on TCG Player for either version. So, like, I get it, right? Magiline and Chocolat a la mode were reprinted. They're now super cheap. Medulces are a super popular deck. People want to play it and collect it. And it's nice to have the original prints of the card, too. Like, I get it. But why the heck are people buying out Medulce Angeli, of all things, when it has a confirmed reprint in two months coming out? Not just that, but the reprint will either be in the exact same rarity, so an ultra rare, or it'll be a secret rare. So it's not like there's going to be like a huge difference. It's arguably going to be nicer when it gets reprinted. Uh, the price is obviously going to tank very, very soon with the confirmed reprint, and you'll be able to pick them up like maybe a dollar in the future. I mean, that's how much Magiline is at the moment as well. I honestly don't know why I expected anything different, but if for some reason you're still holding on to your Medulce Angelis, please do us all a favor, just move them and buy them back after the reprint. <laughs> Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. Now it didn't give me too much of a headache, which is great. I'm sure that's going to be short-lived, I'm sure that we'll be back after the weekend with a whole list of other buyouts that are going to be pretty insane. I'm definitely going to recommend that you guys try to keep up with Yu-Gi-Oh! news as much as possible on social media, whether that's on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, just to make sure that you guys know what's going on with the game so that you can tell for yourselves too if what you're looking at is some silly hype or if there's an actual justification for a price jump based on like a meta trend or something like that. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button for me as it does help out a ton. Uh, if you guys also can, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what else is going on with the Yu-Gi-Oh market that I may have missed or haven't talked about so that I can cover it in a future video and keep all of you guys as up to date as possible. And of course, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to Tombox and myself for all of the latest Yu-Gi-Oh content. And uh, yeah, so until next time, guys, don't forget to hold onto your MST.TV.